Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and talked about Hilt, the last two episodes actually, and uh, they were pretty well received. So if you miss it, I'll link a card in the top right. You can go ahead and check those out. And in today's video we're going to talk about dealing with um, the Android standard you know, system dialog for selecting a particular date here, right? Um, so as we go ahead and just select a date, we can even change the year if we really wanted to. Um, and then just choose a random date. Um, we can then go ahead and like kind of capture that result and use that. Uh, this is pretty helpful for a variety of reasons. An obvious one is kind of getting uh, you know someone's birthday. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, this is a brand new project here. Uh, inside the main activity XML file, we just have a very simple uh, text view here. Really, not nothing too fancy going on. Uh, has the ID text view. So basically, when we click this text view, we're going to go ahead and fire off the uh, date dialog, the date picker dialog there. So um, let's just go ahead and classically find our view by, by the ID, r.id.textview is what I've named it. And then we're simply just going to put uh, an on click listener here. Uh, now, in, in order to kind of launch this dialog, it's very simple and we don't really need to do too much. Uh, other than know the name of it. So we can go ahead and create a date picker dialog here. Uh, there are a few different constructors. The first one that we're going to use is just the one that has the context. And if we go ahead and click this afterwards, all we have to do is actually click show here. Um, and then this will actually run. So we can go ahead and rerun things here. Uh, basically, when we click this text view, we are just going to show a date picker. So we'll go ahead and click it, and the date picker just operates on its own, right? We haven't done anything special, literally just a few lines, just one line of code, a few characters really. However, we're not capturing the result here. And so this is where we're going to uh, have to introduce the idea of a listener here. So going back to the constructors here, we can see that it takes a context, uh, a context and a theme, and then these other two at the bottom are kind of what we're looking for. We're not going to worry about theming the dialog because it's not the focus of this video. Uh, so we're going to use this third constructor here where we have a context, a listener, um, and then we need to feed it the year, month, and day of month apparently uh, as part of the construction process. So we're going to go ahead and do two things here. We're going to uh, allow this activity to basically be the listener. So we are going to implement the on date set listener uh, interface here and we can very easily just override the one function that we need and now this function is going to be invoked with the relevant information that was selected from the user um, assuming they actually click a particular date and then hit OK. If they cancel the dialog this doesn't get invoked uh, and I guess as baby steps here we will just simply log some output here. Okay and so I've just quickly really done not too much here, just added in a log statement to just print out what we get back from this dialog here. So if we go ahead and click it, we can go ahead and just click on uh, Saturday, April 2nd. And then if we click OK, obviously nothing happens here. However, in our run tab, comically nothing shows up. And that is because we have not changed this constructor here. So I do apologize for that. Uh, as I mentioned, we are going to use the third one. So we do need a listener. So we can actually use uh, the one for listener this. And then uh, we're just going to hack this together just to get it up and running, but we're going to change it to make it a little better, right? So we know the year is 2022. We know the month is actually three because it's zero indexed. And then the day of month is, what is it, the 10th? Um, so then if we go ahead and rerun it, now we should see some things come out in our logs. So we can go ahead and click something. We'll click April 2nd. And then if we run to our logs here, we'll see the output, right? So we have year, dash, dash, month, dash, dash, day of month. And as I mentioned here, it is zero indexed, right? So uh, January 1st of this year, if we take a look at the output here, actually has a month of zero. So something to know about how the date picker ends up working. The month is zero based. However, everything else here, the year and the day of month is not, right? We selected January 1st and we got a one. Uh, so this is just something to be aware of so that you don't get, you know, off by one errors when you're looking for the wrong month. So uh, let's continue here. Let's make this a little bit better. We're going to make use of something called a calendar. So we will say calendar.get instance here. And now we can actually make use of this calendar uh, instead of hard coding things to say to get the year, month, and day of month out of there, right? So all inside the calendar, there is there are these special, I guess, integers here that are defined um, so that we can actually fetch something out of the calendar, right? So we can say calendar.get and then passing in a very particular integer because that is what this requires. Uh, and then all of these, you know, year, 
uh, era, month, week of year, all this information is embedded inside of the calendar class. So it is a little annoying in the sense that like it's maybe not as straightforward as you would want it to be by just saying like calendar.getMonth kind of deal. Um, but this is a bit more of a flexible design. So we can go ahead and just extend this here. And what was this supposed to be? Day of month. A little bit of formatting and we see a pretty simple and straightforward implementation here, right? We create the date picker dialogue, the context is the activity, the listener is also the activity, and then we're kind of feeding it the information that we um, you know, have from our calendar. The calendar.get instance is going to, you know, when that runs, basically look at the machine that it's running on to actually collect the information as far as, you know, year, date, time, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so this date picker actually kind of defaults to whatever date we've told it. So it looks like it is defaulting to today, but if we were to manipulate the date, um, it would default to a different day, right? The power of using a calendar object when it comes time to actually, or, or I guess to work with a date picker dialog is because of how nicely it kind of just fits together with the information that we have here in this on date set function, right? So if we take a look, Basically, once we get our information, we can actually call set and there's a particular function here that has year, month, and they say date, but it's really the day of the month. And we can actually just go ahead and put all that information in, right? Because we basically um, got everything from this function here, it gave us all that information. So we can just go ahead and set it on the particular calendar. And now the beauty of this is that if we take a look at our implementation here, we use this same calendar instance that we just set here to actually kind of initialize this dialogue, right? So the very first time this runs, it's going to be on April 10th, 2022, when I made this video. However, if we went back to February 28th, let's say, we clicked OK. Again, nothing coming up in the UI, but when we go ahead and click on this again, we are creating another date picker dialogue and we're reusing that same calendar instance. And so the year, month, and day of month that we're telling the dialogue to kind of start with was just set here from our previous run, right? Um, so we could even change this to maybe 2005. Uh, and now it's February 5th. And if we click it again, we'll see 2005, February 5th, right? So this kind of just all comes together in a very seamless way, um, especially when you just use a calendar here. So uh, last thing I want to do here, because we've basically been able to create a dialogue with a particular date and time, uh, well, not time, but at least a date. Um, and then we've been able to capture that result. We just want to update maybe this thing here, right? Date goes here. That kind of seems like any selection that we make is a little useless. So let's go ahead and pretty that up. Uh, in order to do so, we're going to make use of something else that's pretty common in Android. Uh, we call it the simple date formatter um, or simple date format. And then I believe right in the constructor here, we can actually just pass a pattern and then also a locale. So I'm in the US, I'm just gonna use the locale US. And then this pattern here, um, it's extremely powerful. It's, it's quite interesting. Uh, I know a little bit about maybe what I want to say here. So we can do like MMM period DD comma year, 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 right? This looks a little funky. I don't know why I ran it, we didn't use anything. This looks a little funky here, but I'll explain what's going on in a moment. Um, but let's go ahead and just create a function here that will kind of format the calendar, uh, the current state of the calendar with uh, this formatter here, right? Okay, so I've created this function down here called display formatted date, and we're taking in uh, a timestamp specifically that is a long. We'll talk about that momentarily, uh, but at, as far as using the formatter, it's pretty straightforward. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab this. I think it would be best to kind of save this as a variable or use view binding, but again, that's not really the focus of this video. Um, but we can very easily just say formatter.format and timestamp is something that it just, or along is something that it just knows how to work with pretty simply. Um, and then this is where the pattern starts to come into play here. It'll actually format this long, right? Which is just like a random string, randomly large number, right? It'll format that into a human readable date here. So. After we go ahead and set this uh, calendar, we'll call display formatted date. And in order to actually get this um, long out of the date, we can do time in millis here. Uh, for good measure, we'll just go ahead and log this as well. And we'll actually do the logging down here. It just makes a little more sense here, right? Every time we display a formatted date, we're gonna go ahead and actually format it. And then we're just gonna log what we're actually uh, formatting here. So now this is all starting to come together. If we click on this little uh, you know, text view here and we change the date, 
Now we see something here that looks like what the user has just selected. If we take a look at the run tab here, we can actually see that this is formatted, you know, the timestamp of exactly this moment in time, right? So if we just go ahead and copy that, and bounce over to a uh, Unix or Epoch time converter kind of deal. Um, we can paste this in here and we can actually say, you know, convert this and it'll say Saturday, April 2nd, um, and then it'll give you your time zone relative, you know, this was eight days ago, right? This, this makes sense. Um, so the idea here is that the calendar instance can convert a year, month, day, hour, minute, second, millisecond, I believe even, uh, kind of like representation of a moment in time uh, into just a long, right? Just a, just a, this number here, which represents the number of milliseconds since January, like December 31st, 1969 or something like that. Like it's just, it's just a stake in the ground and it's just a measurement of time since then, the number of milliseconds. Um, and so instead of obviously seeing this, that's not really super helpful to the user, we can actually run it through our formatter here uh, and it will actually, you know, give us something reasonable. Uh, I kind of knew some of the formatting here, but if we take a look at the simple date format class and you go all the way up or you just Google it, there is this table that's going to be out there somewhere. It's really not all that nice to see inside of this IDE for some reason, it's very loud. Uh, but these different letters that you can provide to it mean different things, right? So the MM is the month in year, or sorry, the capital M is the month in year, context sensitive, uh, whereas a lowercase m has to do with like a minute in hour, right? So there, there's just a little bit of syntax, I guess, to kind of understand how to use the simple date format. But there's a million examples online. This is kind of a pretty straightforward one. Uh, instead of the period, if we were to just do four M's, I believe that will actually like print out the entire uh, date here. So if we go to something a little longer than, uh, you know, a couple letters, we can now see that it says August instead of the AUG period, right? So it's not the abbreviation anymore. It's the actual uh, full name and then the DD means that there should always be you know two numbers to represent the day but if we go ahead and delete one of those um, you won't see something that like that where it had an 04 right if we select the fourth day or anything less than 10 right two digits it'll actually truncate that so you don't have the the leading zero in front of it um, whereas you know if you if you do D it'll obviously have both um, and then you can do you know just two Y's if you only want to see 22 at the end so anyway this is getting a little bit more um, in depth than I thought I, I wanted it to be but point is is that there's a million examples of the simple date format and it's very easy to work with here uh, best to work with a timestamp in a long uh, format. It's just cleanest, simplest, and, you know, pretty standard to actually do. So, um, yeah, that, that's about it, though. We've created this date picker dialog. We go ahead and uh, click on it, and it'll default to that date, and then we can select any day that we want, uh, and we just display that information, right? So this is a pretty helpful thing, pretty useful in the world of Android, in whatever application you are building. Um, so the next step of this, the next video is going to be the time selector that is also a system dialog and works very similar to this date picker dialog. I believe it's called a time picker dialog. And we're just going to go ahead and explore that, jump into that, and then be able to actually get, you know, a full date time kind of thing. Um, and allow the user to really not only specify a date, but also specify a specific, you know, minute within an hour of a particular day. Uh, if that is helpful for your application. So if you made it this far, I would really appreciate a like. Thank you for sticking with me here. I hope this is helpful. If you are brand new, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one where we're going to dive into the time aspect of things. I'll see you there. Thanks.